Good evening, good evening, good evening, and good evening once again. i like for you to share this live stream with your Facebook followers and your Facebook friends. i like for you to share this live stream once again with your Facebook followers and your Facebook friends. i like for you to share this live stream uh, with any uh, missing persons groups that you've joined that you may be a part of on this evening. I'd like for you to, again, share this live stream. I want to leave a little message here for everyone who is tuning in on this live stream this evening. Okay. And so I have some other people. Share, 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 share. Um, I hate to say share so many times, but I like for you to share this live stream today. I'm trying to pin. I am trying my best to pin something that I can. Mm. Please share the live stream. All right. Okay. So um, I am going to I am going to go ahead and begin sharing this live stream myself. I'll share it out with several individuals i'm waiting on some of you all to join tonight and so i'm going to begin sharing this live stream out myself um i'll begin sharing it right now so i am sharing this live stream to missing justice i'm sharing this live stream to indianapolis chat i'm sharing this live stream to Missing, lost, and traffic it. I'm sharing this live stream to Flint Community Conversation. I'm sharing this live stream to, and the, these are Facebook groups. I'm sharing this live stream to Detroit Crime and Homicide. As you are coming in, um, it would be awesome. This is a social media platform and the way we kind of get, um, you know, the news out and about uh, on social media and within the Facebook community, we typically share live streams. And so that's how that's done. And so that is why I'm asking for you to share this live stream. We're sharing this live stream. If you're joining, I would love for you to share I am going to continue sharing this live stream. I'm going to share this live stream with Chicago Girls Missing and Current event. I'm going to share this live stream with, um, these are groups that I have joined, um, Michigan Crimes and Headlines. I am continuing to share this live stream right now. I am going to share it with Indianapolis Crime Reports. I'm continuing to share this live stream until they stop me from sharing. Um, I'm continuing to share this live stream out tonight. Let's see what other group. There's another group. I would like to share this live stream with Mid Michigan Now News, NBC 25, and Fox 66. I don't know if they'll share the live stream or not, but um, I'll you know share it anyway, right? I'll share it anyway. I am going to continue to share this live stream. Hello, how are you doing, Mrs. Williams? I'm going to continue to share this live stream to Chicago's Black Business Network. They have been very supportive of my endeavors. Chicago Business um, Black. Am I saying it right? 
Chicago Black Business Network. <laughs> okay. Thank you for su your support. I just wanted to make sure I said it right. I know y'all like, why is she so excited when she said that? Um, Chicago Black Business Network. They've been extremely supportive in helping missing, lost, and trafficked. Basically, just spread the word about missing persons. That's what they, you know, they just allow me to share my content to their group with all those folks they got in it. So, thank you, Chicago Black Business Network, for all that you do. Um, okay, for all that you do. I am also going to share this live with, I am a part of Blue Lives Matter. Yes, I am. I'm going to share this live stream with Blue Lives Matter. I thank you, our men in blue. You have helped us tremendously. So many different police officers accomplish, um, accomplish finding some folks. So we thank you, men in blue, for all that you do. And I've shared this live stream to Blue Lives Matter. And they don't have to because they're, that group is just all about Blue Lives Mattering. Talking about, you know, you know, lifting police officers up, right? Supporting them. They do allow postings of missing persons coming from me to be posted to their group. So, therefore, there are a whole lot of police officers across the country who are learning about the individuals that um, myself, um, I'm reporting on, right? And they're learning about, they're reviewing, they're sharing, they're supporting, you know, search efforts across the country. Thank you so very much, Blue Lives Matter. Um, and they're doing that, all of that just simply by allowing a share for me to stay posted in their group. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I have several people viewing, just a handful of folk. I see this number six here, so there aren't a lot of people. There's a handful of folks. I'm not sure if just there just isn't a lot of people. There aren't a lot of individuals, excuse me, interested in, you know, the disappearance of Zion Foster. Um, I don't know. Maybe the interest has dwindled, um, but... I'm just going to um, go ahead and move forth with the responsibility of giving you an update, okay? Regardless, all right? So um, thank you so much for joining tonight. Thank you so much for joining on tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I'm looking for a post. I'll be reading pretty much from that Pacific post. I'll be reading from that post. There's a post that I made um, and posted to Pebbles, Bam Bam, and a missing loss and traffic kit doing um, what I thought was a pretty, I gave or delivered what I thought to be a very thorough timeline of, of events, you know, leading up to the disappearance of Zion Foster. I thought, uh, you know, delivering this timeline to the public would help the public with context because context matters um, and it would help the public get a better understanding of possibly um, what might, might have been happening that evening. When I say might, might. Um, there is no absolute indefinite, you know, Pacific, you know, conclusions we can draw upon just yet, okay? But the text message timeline does help significantly. Um, it does call logs, um, you know, that sort of thing. Who called who? What was text? What was said? Um, it helps to provide context, and context is key. And um, in any sort of missing persons case, um, in any investigation, you need to have you need to have a better understanding of what a person was doing, um, you know, who they were communicating with, you know, what type of activities were was that person involved in before, you know, the missing 
person event took place, right? So that's just my spiel on that. So yes, Zion Foster is still missing. Uh, she's still missing. Um, I'm looking, I just, I like to go ahead and Google, um, just to see if there is a, something that came out, you know, that has been published by a local media outlet, um, as of today. And I don't see anything recent. I don't see any news that's recent, right? So Miss Foster was last seen January 4th, right? At 22000 block of Mirroroy's Court. And that's actually in East Point, Michigan, okay? So she was last seen January 4th. And I know that, you know, the public is very much concerned regarding her, you know, whereabouts um, being that today is February 2nd, okay? And then what, another two days, we'll be looking at February 4th, you know, would have been a, a complete and absolute complete month since Miss Foster has been missing, okay? So she was last seen, again, for those of you just, just joining the live stream, in East Point, Michigan, January 4th. That's when she was last seen, last seen at her home, right, on Mel Roy's Court. Um, although she was last seen in East Point, Michigan, the Detroit, all right, uh, Michigan Police Department, their investigators are investigating. They are doing a, a rather in-depth investigation, thorough investigation um, into her disappearance and other information that they've um, recently become aware of. Okay. So I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, you know, basically, you know, when she went missing or where she went missing from, and, um, you need to know who, uh, what department is investigating. It is the Detroit, Michigan police department investigating her disappearance at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Facebook. Without further ado, and I'm going to go to my post that I made, created, posted on um, Zion Foster discussing. I discussed the timeline. There was a timeline um, of, you know, messages. I kind of give you a breakdown on those messages. There was message, a mess, text message exchange between Miss Foster and in another individual, um, I am not going to name that individual, um, won't be naming that individual uh, for privacy concerns. I'm just not going to do that. But it was she was speaking with another individual in these text messages, and that individual had been speaking with her as well. Okay, so let's see. Zion Foster, she was last seen, as you know, January 4th, 2022, by her mother and siblings. Um, leaked test text messages reveal Zion was working and was scheduled to clock out at 10 o'clock p.m. A friend repeatedly texted Zion while she was at work. And even after her shift ended, the unnamed friend believes Zion was with a cousin, text messages revealed. At 12.28 a.m., the unnamed friend in a call with Zion for was, excuse me, in a call with Zion for a duration of 10 minutes. A source told Missing Lost in Traffic it, the unnamed friend heard commotion and the phone call with Zion abruptly ended. OMW 
um, most people understand OMW to mean on my way was sent to the unnamed friend in a text message at 12.59 a.m. I'm pissed because you let your phone die, the friend replied. No response via text could be seen in that chat history between the unnamed friend and Zion after you let your phone die message was sent. Jalen Brazier has been charged with two counts of perjury in connection with Zion Foster disappearance. Brazier was not charged with homicide or any violent crime. The assistant, Macomb County Assistant Prosecutor Steve Fox told the judge the perjury charges are for the statement he made to police actively deceiving them on the whereabouts of Zion Foster, the health and safety of Zion Foster and his interaction with her. WZYX Detroit reported. According to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office, a warrant request for homicide was received from the Detroit Police Department. However, that request was sent back to Detroit Police for further investigation. Murder and sex trafficking allegations have been made in numerous Facebook posts um, regarding the disappearance of Zion Foster. A review of text messages reveal Zion had intended on heading home about 1 a.m. and did not make plans to run away. It's safe to assume some unforeseen incident or conflict played a significant role in Zion's disappearance. However, investigators have not given the public a full account on what transpired between January 4th and January 5th of 2022. I did have a conversation with the sergeant. Uh, I hate to say sergeant. I want to make sure that I have the sergeant's name correct. Um, I had a very brief conversation with the sergeant over the Detroit, Michigan Police uh, Department, and that was a uh, a few days ago. I had a, I reached out to her, had a conversation with her, and uh, she informed me that uh, Zion Foster had not been has not been located, and um, the the police department. They are, you know, actively involved in recovery efforts uh, to locate uh, Zion Foster. It, the sergeant also informed me that no, there is no specific place, right? The police have pinpointed um, as to where Ms. Foster may be at this time. And um, the sergeant I spoke with is Sergeant Shannon Jones. Shannon Jones. Shannon Jones. I want to make sure that I uh, quote her. She is the uh, Detroit Police Department sergeant, and she um, she does supervise the homicide and missing persons. Okay, homicide and missing persons. Um, is there any questions that anyone has regarding um, Zion's disappearance, something that you may have missed? Um, maybe you must have understood something that was stated. Um, I will answer questions if you have any questions. Um, of course, I know that 
there are so many different people who join this live stream at different times. So um, before I end the live stream, I hate to just, you know, just end it. And um, just in case there are some clarifications that you would like to be made. So I'm all like ears and I'm here. If you want to join the live, um, I'm, you know, I'm in a chatty mood. You can join and ask your question as well. Why isn't it being said whether or not he has, he has, I don't understand the rest of what you're saying. So if you can just type out another message, I'll, um, to clarify what you're saying, Miss Keisha, and I'll, um, I definitely will respond. <clears throat> to the best of my knowledge, I can just, I don't, I'm not into making up stuff. I'm not about to make up anything. So, um, just to the best of my knowledge as of what is going on right now. Okay. Or could be happening right now. I'll say what could be happening. What happened to her missing person group? That missing person group was archived. Um, um, that missing person group was archived. I'm going to look for it right now. The missing Zion foster group. Um, I'm right here. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm here and I see that the group was archived January 25th. Okay. Uh, of 22. It says you can create posts, like, comment, or add more members, but you can still and but you can still view all posts whatever that means you can just basically view all of the posts in the group i i'm i don't and i don't know why it was archived i just know that it was archived on january 25th of 2022 all right why hasn't it been said whether or not he is saying anything else uh, I believe because it's an open investigation, I do believe that uh, based upon the conversation I had with Ms. Jones um, and what I'm looking at, just reading the most recent updates available that, you know, police are not wanting to release all the information that they have right now because it could definitely jeopardize their investigation. And that's what I that's what I believe is happening right now. Okay. All right. So looks like somebody's trying to join. Let's see who this is. So I'll add this person. Somebody's I've added you. Hello, how are you? I'm doing Hi. well. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Um, I'm just want to tell you, you're doing such a great job. Thank you for keeping this alive. I don't even know if you're here in Detroit with, with us. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm you not. are not. Yes. So I had someone, um, got, uh, one of my timeline today and was asking me like for any updates because we have so many young girls that are missing, like literally downtown, the missing persons report, which you probably know, just dealing with things nationwide. It's thick as the old yellow pages used to be. Oh, wow. So, you know, as I um inboxed you last night, letting you know that the other 18-year-old girl that was missing for a short time mm -hmm. was found dead. Yeah. So, you know, we have to, as a community, everybody talks to somebody. Mm -hmm. Someone confides in somebody. Yes. Someone That's knows where Zion is, that somebody needs to speak up. It's, it's imperative. It's just so heartbreaking. You know, it's imperative that the community sticks together. You know, we're so used to getting on the news, looking for the five or six o'clock or 11 o'clock news to hear the drama that's going on in our community. Mm -hmm. We need to be engaged. We need to keep this alive. Yep. We need to keep the pressure. Police rely on tips from us. They're not mm -hmm. genies in the bottle to just make this up. They rely on precious hot tips that are real <laughs> that would direct them where they need to go to solve the case yeah. so in this case i can't even imagine i'm a mother of six children four girls two boys i can't imagine that my child will be lost i i can't even imagine how this mom feels and i was reading some of the um 
statements that the family was saying, you know, they said, you know, our child is, this is, she's not a news story, which is, which is absolutely true. Yes. It's not just something, the, the hottest topic of the city right now. Yeah. It, that's not what's going on. Mm -hmm. And it's just so important that we keep this story going. I appreciate everything that you do because you have countless hours. I've been following you for a while. But when I saw you said, send, send a friend request, you know, I know you don't have to do this. Yo, you're not getting paid to do this. No, not at all. <laughs> you're doing this because this is your heart. Yeah. And you, you care. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very few people in the world like us that actually spend time out of our day which I don't know if people call it nosy or we don't have anything else to do. I don't know. But it's only a few of us to actually spend time out of our day to actually help in the areas that nobody is willing to touch. Wow. So yeah. I'm going to be watching closely as I can, as I can conduct my day in, from work. And any information that I have, I will definitely share with you. Mm -hmm. And you just keep doing a great job. I appreciate you. I'm the trying. efforts. I, I never I never get a chance um to really talk to no you know you don't talk to people who really care for real and I'm one of those people mm -hmm. so I'm just really proud of your work that you're doing and you keep doing a great job thank you thank you so much you have a great evening I pre and what's your name again I'm sorry my name is Tamara Liberty Smith I'm a community activist here in Detroit Michigan okay I'm just gonna write down I am going to write to me be a country I'm just gonna write I am going to write down Tamara Smith so I can make sure. No, you got to remember Tamara Liberty. Liberty. Smith. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you'll find a lot of Tamara Smith, okay. but there are no Tamara Liberty Smith. Okay. No, not with that middle name, but none. I'm going yeah. to reach out to you, put you in my favorites, and I want to make sure that I stay in constant con uh, contact with you. If that makes sense. But I, I'm, I'm just happy to hear that you've been like following me and just kind of seeing my growth. So thank For years. you. For years. For years, I know you're not a joke. I'm the admin of the Detroit Crime and Homicide page, so I see everything that you send over. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I appreciate you. All right. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Really appreciate Miss Tamara Liberty Smith reaching out with such calm words and just anybody that's con you know cares about our youth and the, our youth's well-being i i um just i'm i'm passionate about our youth their well-being them being found being safe and just being in places that they should be really um you know at those ages there's no way to monitor everything my mom was not able to monitor everything everything that i did she just you know she was not she was not i got away with some things uh and i was just i was just it was just grace and mercy that's it it was just grace and mercy because a lot of times i did things um or uh, went left when i was supposed to go right or whatever and um it was just grace and mercy and so um and definitely our uh kids our youth teenagers you know um they are all you know my kids you know in you know just symbolically speaking you know i don't have any children personally but um our youth they are so important and um they need our help they need our guidance um they need folks you know they need peers talking about these situations um you know motivating them to you know go in different directions and just kind of process decisions that they're making and i'm just speaking in general terms i, I i'm saying that you know a lot of youth are going missing and um for the most part it has a lot to do with decision making um there are decisions that can be made and uh, if it's not properly vetted and thought through, um, our young people can and they are finding themselves in some situations that uh, maybe they can get out of and some are not being able to get out of those situations. And so I know that, I do, I do know and I do realize that I there are not a lot of people pleading for Zion's return right now. 
I'm not seeing that. I was seeing that at, initially. But over the past week, I have not seen that. I do. Uh, I, I feel as though the most recent update regarding the perjury charges Mr. Brazier is facing and the pending homicide warrant. And it was sent back for review, okay? And you can just kind of you, you can just Google Zion Foster really. I'll include a link to the to the latest, you know, article discussing her disappearance, but I believe that may have played a significant role into why you 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 you're not seeing this um I would say um uh, wanna find the right words here. You're not seeing a big, massive initiative, okay, um, taking place at least publicly or on social media, right, uh, to find her, you know. That does not mean that there aren't things happening in the background. That does not mean that at all. Does not mean that the Detroit Police Department are overlooking this case at all. Uh, I I believe, I wholeheartedly believe. Um, the sergeant also mentioned wrapping this up. She said, we're wrapping it up. I believe that they are in the phase of gathering important information and not jumping the gun, right? They're not gonna have a public, they're not gonna have a press conference, right? And it, until they really have everything, if that makes sense, they have everything that they need uh, to feel confident, right? And having a public conversation or giving a public update on Ms. Foster's disappearance, um, I do believe uh, wholeheartedly, whole, wholeheartedly that the Detroit Police Department, that they definitely definitely have information right um i believe that uh, they I, I know that they have some information for sure and they are working all of their leads and um what they want like to do right now is uh, recover zion foster they want to find her and they need information that could help them um, that would guide them to exactly where she is, okay? Of course, um, we know that there is a criminal element to this investigation. So if you've been reading the headlines, if you're reading, if you're looking at key words uh, in, the, in, the, in, in you're understanding it within the context that I'm understanding those key words, we know that this has um, evolved into a criminal investigation. Okay, um, it has evolved into a criminal investigation. Um, however, uh, no one, I'm not getting any information from anyone, and the police have not said that they've gotten any um, credible information um, helping them to pinpoint where Ms. Foster could be at this time at this time are there any other questions that anyone else has um I, I i did discuss text messages um i quoted statements that were made if you want to see those text messages they are not hidden but they are on patreon you will have to subscribe i did that for a reason i knew that those text messages and the information that i'm discussing it was not. It's, it's not. It's not going to survive on Facebook on a public post. It's going. It's going to be at risk of anybody feeling the least bit sensitive, emotional, whatever. It'll probably get reported. Okay. So, um, in order to protect my content and uh, to protect information that I have, and to ensure that it's not going to be reported, taken down all of that, um, you'll have to subscribe to Patreon. Now, if you are 
subscribing to Patreon with a debit card or a credit card that has insufficient funds for like one dollar, that's not right. That's not right. I wouldn't do that. Um, I'm, I had to block several people who used a credit or debit card. They may have been subscribing for only $1, $2, $3, or $5, and they used a card, credit card or debit card uh, that was, you know, not in service or had insufficient funds just so they could view the content and... Um, I am I'm blocking those individuals, and I'll be blocking anyone else that does that in the future. You can subscribe, um, and uh, I'm on hard. I'm having hard times myself, but you can subscribe for as little as one dollar, and uh, choose to renew that and uh, use a debit or credit card that actually has a dollar on it. I, I do. I have faith in us that we can do that. I have faith in us that we can do that. I do. And so that's my spiel on that. Someone wants me to talk about Craig Lyles. I wanted to have a totally separate conversation about Craig Lyles in another live stream. I was not planning on discussing him in depth tonight, but um, I did. Uh, the private investigator uh, who works with me assists me with locating information on missing persons after this is after a long day of work and school um and she is going through human trafficking training right now um uh, as we speak um, so she uh, goes out of her way to pull reports and sightings and surveillance footage and all of that um uh, to assist missing loss and trafficking so there was a comprehensive report that was sent to me and Upon reviewing that comprehensive report, I noticed, and I'm going to pull up, I'm going to go to the screenshots now, um, right now that I took, of Craig Lowes. I noticed that the previous number his family is aware of is still an active number. It's listed as an active number. Um, and you know, I was able to sit down and kind of excuse away why it would be listed as an active number under his name. It's just possible that someone else has gotten that previous number. This is the number that his family members know about, right? It's listed as currently active, in service, and still in his name, okay? And so I thought, you know, well, it's possible it's possible that, you know, the phone is has been transferred to someone else, uh, the number itself, and his name is still coming up, probably like in the billing history. What do I mean by that? I've gotten phones. I, I, I do that switching. Switch from T-Mobile to Boost, Boost Mobile, from P Metro PCS, right? to, uh, uh, you know, back to T-Mobile, and I've gotten phones, and, and I, I, they turn the phone on, I switch my number, and then somebody else's information, the previous owner, like information, address, and all of that is coming up when I go to account. I have to go in and manually change all that stuff. I've had to go in, I have to have to call customer service after getting the phone, right, and switching, doing the switch thing, and let them know that I am not that person and yeah, you know, the person that they have, and I, they've even had a whole other another address of the previous person, right, um, connected with that Pacific account or with or to. It's it's difficult to explain, but I would say. Um, to that Pacific phone. And I've had to, like, this is, change the address. This is not my address. This is the previous owner's address. This is, I am the new account, and I've had to manually do it, reach out to customer service to do it. So, you know, it's possible it's active. This number is active and active in someone else's name. That's possible. 
Um, something that I noticed that really was a bit more jarring for me is that and the the private investigator brought this to my attention. Um, the private investigators say, you know, there's a, another number, you know, for this individual. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I looked at it closely. And upon reviewing it, I noticed that this number is a service that was cut on. I'm trying to zoom in right now. There was a, a service cut on in Craig Lau's name and someone named Julio Moreno as early as December of 2021. Not 2020, 2021, okay? 2021. If you are able to tag Mr. Lyle's mother, and this live stream was not about Mr. Lyle's, but I'm just discussing it because someone brought it up. That would be great. And it's listed as an active number. So I'm looking at this. The, the service was cut on December 2021. And it's active as of January 2022. For the missing Michigan man, I'm kind of, I'm switching to another person I'm talking about now. The man that has been missing since January, is it January 21st of 2021? I found it to be eye-opening eye to see that service was cut on. Phone service was cut on with uh, Verizon Wireless in December for the gentleman, Mr. Craig Louse, who has been missing. He's been missing since January of 2021. He's been missing a year. And, um, and the owners of this phone is Craig Louse and Julio. We'll be trying to find out who that person is. Uh, Moreno, okay? Am I say it, saying the date wrong? Am I saying the date wrong? Hold on, hold on. I, am I saying it wrong? Let me make sure I'm saying the date right. So Craig Louse. I apologize. All right. He was last seen. I just want to pull up the article here that I have. Craig Lows. And forgive me if I quoted the wrong incorrect date. January 21st is when he was last seen. Okay. And um I'm looking at something else. I'm sorry. Of 2021. Okay. It says January 21st in the articles that I'm looking at. <clears throat> in the articles that I'm looking at. January 20. Well, I pulled up one. I thought this was a really Oakland. Oakland. Um, it's saying January 21st. Of 2021 is when Mr. Lyles uh, was last seen. He was last seen in the company of a friend, Michael Tyler Butler. Um, Butler was 34 years of age at the time, and um, he had refused, reportedly refused to speak with police regarding Lyles' disappearance. Um, the news uh, release states. So. It is odd for a person who has been missing, you know, more than three months, more than six months, more than 10 months, right? It's really odd for there to be a service 
um, cut on in that person's name and then I see that there is another person who is listed as the registered owner of that Pacific phone uh, for that phone number. And there could be, you know, other reasons for this, perhaps. But, um, you know, we'll have to look further into it, really, uh, to get a better understanding as of, you know, why Mr. Lau's name is coming up. And all of this is connected to his social security number, okay? Um, so why is Mr. Lau's name coming up as being a registered owner along with this other person, Julio Moreno, uh, of a cell phone service recently activated, right? These last month, just last month. So um, we'll be looking into that. I am not going to begin making a bunch of, um, you know, assumptions. Um, that is just what we have thus far. I am going to have a meeting with the private investigator on this evening after this live stream ends because we got to try to figure out why this service was cut on. We need to find out if someone is just simply using Mr. Lyle's information. Is this the identity theft? What's going on? We just we just want to look further into it really to find out what's going on. Did Mr. Lyle's in fact cut this service on himself? Like we don't know. So we'll have to look in further into it. Is there any other questions anyone has regarding Zion Foster? Um, initially, I was I, had, I was talking about Zion Foster and her disappearance. Is there any other questions anyone else, anyone has about her and her disappearance? Looks like no one has any other questions at this time. Um, I am going to just share how you can support me. Um, I ask for you to follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to get, I, only have, I have 489 followers. I would like to have 600 followers. That's the goal for now. Um, I have, it's growing, it's growing, but I'd like for more people to come on over to Instagram. Uh, missing, lost in traffic, it is on Instagram. And um, I see that there are other individuals with larger platforms checking out what what I'm doing and really liking my posts and I'm feeling encouraged. I want you to find us on YouTube YouTube missing loss and traffic it is on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. Um, I have been really busy consume and just having a lot going on. So I, I'm just not pushing out a lot of videos right now. You will see, not like verbal videos. I'm doing a lot of mini slideshows, just giving you an overview on missing person cases. And uh, when I'm able to get in contact with family members and friends, I, I'm hosting interviews, right? And using YouTube for that purpose for StreamYard purposes, but um, you will definitely see a lot of mini slideshows that I do, that's being posted. I just want to do my part in getting awareness out there um, in helping to create awareness about missing persons. So we're on YouTube. We are, I am the founder. I, make no mistake, I am the founder. Um, we, this is a not-for-profit um, we do need a little profit to survive and thrive and, uh, you know, service the community, so to speak. But this is a legitimate, not for profit with an EIN number organization, missing, lost, and trafficking. And we just thrive on private donations, right? For now. Um, things will get greater later. But Donations are needed. Donations are needed for any media organization. Funding is some sort of funding is needed. 
So that's why I push that for any any news or organization. It doesn't matter what that content creator is doing. For it, funding is needed. So I couldn't stress that enough. Um, I do a lot with what I have, but um, you know what I have goes only so far, and I can only do so much. And I'm having folks reaching out to me all over the country. Even out of country, but even all over the country, wanting like in depth coverage um, on missing persons. And they want someone to do a deep dive into cold cases, um, homicides that have gone cold. And so, yeah, it takes funding to do that. So, with that being said, I'd like for you to join Missing, Lost, and Trafficking on Facebook. It's a thriving group. Uh, of supporters and members we're working together we're sharing it may not seem like we are but you know sharing information with each other and doing what we can to um, help family members right find their missing loved ones and even if you're just sharing a post you're helping somebody um, also donations again are needed I wouldn't say that they aren't at all um, but I don't you know, I don't have a specific requirement, but it's needed. Um, hashtag, you know, find the missing, okay? So any amount, find the missing. It would it just help me to improve what I do, okay? Find the missing. So I'm putting it here. I'm trying to enter it right now. And then I'm entering that in as the cash app, okay? All right, so that is the cash out, and we have Venmo and other ways of supporting us. Support us on Patreon as well. You know, join Patreon. You can join for as little as one dollar, and I hope you don't use a card with insufficient funds <laughs> for one dollar, like several people did recently. That was bogus. All right, so <clears throat> thank you so very much for your support. Thank you so very much for all that you do. We hope sooner rather than later that Ms. Foster will be found or recovered. We hope sooner, sooner rather than later that Mr. Craig Lowes will be found or recovered. And both of these individuals are missing individuals out of the state of Michigan. Okay. Zion Foster, last seen in East Point. And then we have Mr. Lows, Craig Lows, last seen in Waterford Township. Okay. Michigan. Thank y'all. Thank you all so much and have a great evening.